The, the, the God had given me, I, I saw through the veil, I said, wait a minute. What's missing is we're not doing things from the inception. And see, what's happened is all this Gentile stuff has watered down the meat. In fact, if Christians had really been continuing the feast, a lot more Jews would have become Christians. Because first of all, stop and think about it. They know Easter is a pagan holiday. So you're going to say you following our Messiah, but you're celebrating the pagan holiday. See, so you got to stop. When you give a Hebraic understanding of it, yes, yeah. You, you, it, Paul talked about the Queen of Heaven being his biggest adversary. Sure. You know, and, and see, in other words, again, it's right here before us, but you can't see the forest for the trees. It's misdirection. And so what we're doing is we're working on our perfection. Rest assured, when I came back to God from backslidden state of 25, I didn't know this stuff. Reverend Bell didn't know this stuff. I don't think Charles Franklin Young knew it. I don't think that Brother Daryl Jessup knew it. You know? But God used them. And that's the whole thing about it is, is that God only uses you in as much as you know. And what it happens is he doesn't hold certain stuff against you, right. you know. But is, as you grow and and you mature in him, you find out more about his ways. So that's part of that perfecting, right. and you start finding out more and more and more. You know, I I, you know, I told my wife years ago, and I can't tell you what year it was. We moved here in 1987, but I told her we still live in Tarboro, and we lived there for almost eight years. I said something ain't right about this this with this Easter. And I said, Jesus said three days. I said, Friday afternoon to Sunday morning is not three days. And so it's the high, it's called high days. And on the Hebraic calendar, they have high days. Now in the Roman Greco calendar that we are under, we have we have leap year, which is 365 and a fourth. And every four years, those those four fourths become a day. And the sleep year. Yeah, the high day scripture is found in John, the 19th chapter, and the 31st verse. Let me see that. Where it says, Yeah. It said that Jesus was crucified. Look here. Yeah, John, but it's John 19. I got my hand on it. Yeah. 31st verse. The Jews, therefore, because it was a preparation that the body should not remain upon the cross for the Sabbath day, for that Sabbath day was a high day. So he was right, it's right there before us for years. God gave me the revelation when I heard John Hagee preach on it. When I heard John Hagee preach on it, and then when I began to study with Bishop James Williams, James W. Williams, it all made sense to me. You see, saw, and your, your Bible says the same thing probably. Most Bibles probably do in this King James Version. This particular Bible is the Healing Bible. Uh, Dr. Marcello. But look, look up your Bible, and that's that's the book of St. John, the 19th chapter, verse 31. Because see, a lot of folk think I'm making stuff up, you know, again. But folk that know that Bible, they know I ain't making it up. In fact, what will happen is, and this has happened with other revelations that God's given me, I've spoken stuff, and folk said, wait a minute, it's in there. I've read it. You know, I remember when there was, it was an argument about about how folk dressed, and my my late cousin Raymond Lee Drone was was uh, of the contention that Deuteronomy 22 and 5 had something to do with it. I told him, no, it doesn't. And I, you know, I quote the scripture and and write with the word of truth. And a man who had been a barber and a deacon in my dad's church, St. Stephen Missionary Baptist Church in Tarboro, North Carolina, uh, uh, Deacon Ernest Dunn. Who had cut three generations of drone hair at the time? Cut my granddaddy's hair. Cut my dad's hair. Was cutting mine. He was uh, in the in. He's one of the barbers in the barber shop. And when I said it, he said it's in there, I've read it. So instantly he knew I spoke the truth. Why? Because he had read the word. So when I said it, it became rainbow. He knew it was true. So here again, let me let me say it again. St. John 19.31, the Jews, therefore, because it was a preparation that the body 
should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day. For that Sabbath day was a high day. We saw Pilate that their legs might be broken, that they might be taken away. Of course, we realized that they wanted to break Jesus' legs. They didn't need to. He was already dead, which surprised everybody. But it was, it was prophesied. It says that a bone was going to be broken. You know, whenever, because some people might not understand the importance of high days. Mm -hmm. uh, all of the high day is, is the Hebrew calendar was 360 days. And you can't divide 360 evenly by seven. You know what I mean? So what they did was, like Pop said, like leap years, right? What they did was they instituted Sabbaths, you know what I'm saying, special Sabbaths that were designed to be able to get as many Sabbaths needed into the year. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus being, uh, being having died, in fact, we actually, our week actually lines up with the same logic because Wednesday going over, excuse me, Tuesday night going over into Wednesday, you know what I'm saying? It's, 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 it's Passover. You know what I'm saying? Like, like this year. So it's like tomorrow would be considered the high day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It would be it would be considered the uh, it would be considered the high day. And uh, all that the high day meant is that it's a special Sabbath that's instituted as well as the Sabbath. Because some of y'all know that the Sabbath is on Saturday, mm -hmm. and this is where the confusion uh, actually gets in. A lot of Gentiles have read it, or you interpreted that scripture. John 19 and 31, through the lens of the Sabbath is on Saturday. So that makes perfect sense. Oh, man, so Jesus, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, he's taking off the cross because the Sabbath is the next day. All you need to do is just Google uh, high days. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, we're going to put the information up on mm -hmm. the page, and then they'll be straight. Yeah, but the thing about it is, is again, we're, we're, we're working on our perfection, and we'll find out more and more things. And so, again, uh the only preacher I ever heard talk about high days at the time was John Hay. I called him, called him, and called him. But in my study with Bishop James W. Williams, you know, uh, that's when I had a chance to really go over it and talk in, in detail. And so uh, the mystery that I always had in my head. Because believe it or not, a lot of folk never became Christians because of Easter. Yeah, Christians can't count. Yeah. That's what they said. They like, yeah, they, yeah they, they mock us. Basic math. Because he said got nothing to do with it anyway. It was a trick. You see, to throw us off from Passover. The real celebration. See, because Friday afternoon, the Sunday morning is not three days. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's right. Daniel did say that man was going to change things. You know, it was, a lot of times stuff is prophesied, but with the misdirection in the church, it's still enough to throw you off. But some of these pastors know this stuff is correct because they went to a school that was part of their curriculum. But they don't want to rock the boat. See, some folk are going to get mad if they don't celebrate Easter. Right. You know, they're going to want to buy them clothes. Exactly. You know, and they're going to they're gonna want a good Friday. And they're going to Easter egg hunt. Right. Yeah, yeah that, but it boils down to that, you know. So, But see, I'm running the stuff down to y'all so you can get edification. You know, you handle it however you want to handle it, but again, I'm giving you the information so you can learn. Because again, in English, the way they translate it in the New Testament, they call, they say Jesus Master. But we know that in Hebrew, Rabbi means teacher. And when they said Master, in the way it's translated, it's a mistranslation. Because Jesus was the master teacher. He was a Rabboni. So all I'm doing is running the stuff down to you. As the information is given to me, as my son would say, uh, as I get the dialogue, then I give it to y'all. You know? So the whole thing about it is this helps you in your edification. It helps you understand more and more certain things that are said in the Bible. And this actually opens the gateway for you to get more blessings out of what's going on because you begin to understand. So long story short is this. The crucifixion was on a Wednesday. Now I know that's going to mess y'all mess y'all up, but the crucifixion had to be on a Wednesday. So let's go back and go back to what your Bible says. It says that they came on the morning and Jesus was not there. Let's count it up. 
if it's a year of a high day, Jesus is crucified on Wednesday. So sun goes down 24 hours later, it's Thursday. 24 hours later, it's Friday. Now, Friday sundown, the Saturday sundown is the Sabbath. Right, yeah, that's the original Sabbath. That's the original Sabbath. The high day, the high Sabbath. The one that went to that Wednesday. Yeah, well, that Wednesday. So they showed up. That son Lord, and he won't up. Yeah, you know, so, what did, and what did the angels say to him? The angel, angel looked at him and said, um, who do you see? Is Jesus of Nazareth? He is not here. He is risen. What? Like he said he would. So the whole thing about it is, is it's in the word. At any rate, let me read some of these words over here, and then we're just going to have prayer. Um, let's see. What do I want to talk about? Let me read. Let me read this. This is First John twenty nine. The next day, John sees Jesus coming unto him and said, "Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world." So you know he spoke of him as the Lamb of God because he understood prophetically who he was. But that spotless Lamb. Also, in Jewish tradition, before they got ready to slay the Lamb, mm -hmm. that's what they said. That's what they. That's what the priests had to decree over the Lamb. They had to slay. They had to say. This is the lamb slain for the remission of sin. Mm -hmm. So it's like that was so all the Jews who were standing there, they were like, wait a second, why is why is John saying what we do ritually with the lamb? Why is he saying that to a person? This must be the Messiah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He he said things, you know, and because he said it, he made a declaration as Jesus was coming down the road toward it. He said, Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin in the world. So he made a proclamation. You know, he made, he invoked yeah, he told everybody. who he was. He told him who he was. And then he said, you know, I'm not worthy to even do this. And he said, something to be so. Right. Yes, it's for things to be fulfilled. Right, yeah. You know, so the whole thing about it is, it had to be done. All right, purge out the old leaven, that ye may be a new love, as ye are unleaven for even Christ. I'll pass over sacrifice for us. First Corinthians 5 and 7. Now, uh, the Orthodox Jews, probably Reformed Jews, as well as some Messianic Jews, are, are probably eating on some crackers and some unleavened bread tonight. You know? Um, if you want to go get some, that's fine. That's, that's not a problem. Uh, and what they generally do is they don't eat leavened bread all week. They eat unleavened bread for the rest of the week, you know, to identify with what happened. Because what happened was they had to hurry up and leave. They had to, in other words, they had to start the exodus. They had to get out of Egypt, so they didn't have time for the bread to rise. That's why, that's why it happened like it did. It was time to get out of Dodge, we would say back in the day. Okay? Uh, Gal Galatians, you know, Galatians 1 and 4. Who gave himself to our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father? Ephesians 5 and 2. And walk in love as Christ has also loved us and has given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. Titus 2 and 14, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. So rest assured that God sent the lamb that Everything can be taken care of. And I'm going to read one more scripture. And that's Isaiah 53, 5 through 7. For it's wonderful our transgressions. He is bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. The Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed. He was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He has brought a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before her shears is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. Remember, they said, you're not defending yourself. You know, it was time for him to just be quiet. He didn't say anything. 
But I'm going to remind you, uh, when Peter preached that sermon, Peter said, by stripes ye were healed. So he took eternity and he brought the time element in there. He just reminded them that it had already passed. He really was speaking eternity in time. Yeah, yeah, so he ran the same yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so he said, ye were healed. So again, remember the verb to be? The verb to be is I am, you are, he is. You know, they are, they were. You know, so you, you got that same verb to be. But well, God just says it this way. He says, tell them I am that I am. That's what he told Moses. So you tell them I am that I am. You know, and so guess what? He says, I am that I am. And so the great I am, that's who we represent. And he sent the son, he sent the word, he sent the lamb. And we're going to pray now. Uh, I'm going to ask you now to uh, consider what we we talked about. I want you to meditate on it. And we're going to come back Wednesday night, or usual Wednesday night. I'm going to talk about, I'm going to tell you ahead of time, at least I believe what God will have to talk about. I'm going to talk about some of the benefits of Passover. Um should be seven things we're going to talk about. And uh, just prepare yourself. Just look for this to be one of the best Passovers you ever had. And please, will y'all please send in uh, your testimonies. You know, send them in so we can read them. I'm, I'm thankful that Eric was here to tell this. I was excited about it because I knew it was a great situation. But I knew God was going to take care of it. And, he, and he's doing some great, mighty things. Great and mighty is he. Great and mighty is he. Uh, so, uh, it's, as as word as the word says, I hope you have your oil or your water or something right by your speaker, uh, by your computer, and we're just going to believe God to do something great. Father, we thank you, Lord, for uh, this holy convocation, Lord, this this assembly here tonight. And Father, I thank you, Lord, that we don't always understand, but I know that somebody either live, Lord, or watching this in the archive through this week, or even maybe even past the time of Passover, Lord, but something has uh, been turned on in them. Uh, this is their aha moment. This is their t their epiphany. This is their time of revelation. And I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for reminding me through the word of knowledge. At 11.30 this morning, the Holy Spirit spoke to me, and there's a woman. You have COPD. Uh, I'm feeling the heaviness in your chest. Thank God for the Holy Spirit to remind of all things. But I, at 11.30, while I was doing a mail run on my job, God spoke to me and said that you've got a bad cough and that you're having trouble with your respiratory system. God is healing you now and through this Passover, I feel the Holy Spirit moving in your chest. Yeah, you have a lot of phlegm. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for reminding me. Yes, it was 11.30 a.m. this Monday morning that the Holy Spirit spoke to me and told me that a woman was going to be watching that has respiratory problems. Yes, God actually told me hours before you actually watched because God knew you were going to be watching. And there's a heaviness in your chest and you have really been having a lot of problems. But thank God, and there are some of you 